Live Hurricane Ian leaves 2 million without power. The roof of the ICU ward at a hospital in Port Charlotte has been ripped off. A doctor who works there has said. Dr. Birgit Bodine told U.S. media that the lower levels of the building were also flooded, meaning the sickest patients, who are all on ventilators, had to be evacuated to other parts of the hospital. Videos shared on social media show puddles of water on the floors, with towels scattered trying to dry them up and buckets all over the place. For us, as much as everything is terrible and we're exhausted. As long as our patients do okay and nobody ends up dying or having a bad outcome, that's what matters, Dr. Bodine told the Washington Post. Hurricane Ian has dropped to a Category 1 storm as it moves inland. This is according to the Saphir Simpson hurricane wind scale, which has a 1 to 5 rating, and with the storm's wind speeds peaking at 90 miles per hour, 145 kilometers per hour backslash, it is scaled at Category 1. Pictures are emerging from the city of Fort Myers, only a few miles from where the hurricane made landfall on Wednesday. As we reported earlier, the county administrator said in a news conference on Wednesday that the community has been, to some extent, decimated. It was located 70 miles south of Orlando and is forecast to continue moving across Florida, emerging into the Atlantic Ocean in the next few hours. On Friday, it is projected to move northward to Georgia and South Carolina, while remaining at hurricane strength. Power outages in Florida have struck over 2 million homes and businesses. According to website poweroutage.us. The city of Fort Myers and its surrounding county have declared a curfew after reports of looting at a petrol station. Tampa's mayor warned on Wednesday night that the most dangerous 24 hours lay ahead. President Joe Biden will receive a briefing on Thursday at the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has told Fox News that Hurricane Ian is clearly the biggest flood event southwest of the state has ever seen. That, of course, presents a lot of hazards on the back end. We've been telling folks, be careful once the storm goes past, DeSantis said. He said that during Hurricane Irma in 2017, seven people died as a direct result of the storm, but a further 77 people died in the aftermath. The Republican governor was asked about support from Democratic President Biden's administration. DeSantis said he had requested financial support from the federal government for the next 60 days, and he was optimistic about receiving it. I'll work with anybody that wants to help the people of Southwest Florida, throughout our state. The mayor of Tampa has urged people to shelter in place through the night, adding that the next 24 hours will be the most dangerous. We are going to get the majority of the rain and the higher winds starting about 8 p.m., and they are going to last throughout the night, Jane Castor said at a Wednesday evening briefing. I'll work with anybody that wants to help the people of Southwest Florida, throughout our state. She said adding that the flood levels won't rise as quickly as they did in southern Florida. The storm surge will bring a more gradual influx of water, Castor said. Unlike further south in Florida, Tampa does not currently have any plans to impose a curfew, she confirmed. Anthony Rains, forecaster at the National Hurricane Center, tells the BBC it will take days until we have a clear picture of the extent of the damage caused by Hurricane Ian. But one thing is for sure, Rains says a more gradual influx of water. A curfew has been declared in Lee County, including in the city of Fort Myers. The curfew began at 18 colon OE until further notice, the county said in an online post. The declaration came after storm conditions hampered the ability of Fort Myers police to respond to reports of looting at a petrol station. It will be enforced by law enforcement, Lee County Manager Roger Desjardins said in a news conference on Wednesday evening. He added that there will be until further notice. Earlier he said that the Fort Myers community has been, to some extent, decimated, but it is too early to assess the has been, to some extent, decimated. But he says Wednesday's flight through Hurricane Ian was like nothing he had ever seen before. The latest bulletin from the National Hurricane Center says that Ian is currently located about 95 miles, 150 kilometers, southwest of Orlando with maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. The storm is moving slowly northeast, going at around 8 miles per hour, and is forecast to travel through the state and emerge into the Atlantic Ocean by Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Ian is currently a Category 3 hurricane. Hurricane force winds extend outwards up to 50 miles from the center. Ian will still be at hurricane strength when it reaches Georgia and South Carolina on Friday. The NHC said that there are fears that Hurricane Ian could deluge an area of Florida where the U.S. extracts most of its phosphate fertilizer, 
leading to dangerous contaminants spilling into waterways. Gigantic pools of waste byproduct made during fertilizer production sit in open air ponds known as stacks in the Tampa area. According to AP News, over 1 billion tons of waste water sits in these stacks. Environmentalists warn that they could be vulnerable to flooding in the coming hours and days. Two stacks, including one that leaked 215 meters gallons of polluted water into Tampa Bay last year, are considering most at risk of overflowing. One of the two facilities has only 24 inches, 60 centimeters, of rainfall capacity, while the other can receive only 9.4 inches before it bursts its banks. As Ian cuts a swath across Florida, regions across the state are forecast to receive around 18 inches of rain. Hurricanes are among the most violent storms on Earth, and there's evidence they're getting more powerful. So, how do they form and what impact, if any, is climate change having? Video is emerging of the destruction in southern Florida. Electrical cables have been seen falling and sending sparks into the streets. Winds are toppling trees and power lines, while car parks are being deluged. Hurricane Ian, one of the most powerful storms ever recorded in the U.S., made landfall in Florida at 15.05 local time on Wednesday near Fort Myers, bringing severe flooding and high winds. The Category 4 storm barreled through Cuba earlier this week. Knocking out power across the country. Here's what's been happening. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis told a news conference that emergency officials, including 7,000 National Guard troops, are preparing to lead rescue operations into flood zones. Ian landed with sustained wind speeds up to 241 km per hour, 150 miles per hour, just short of the threshold for Category 5 storms, the strongest classification. More than 4,000 flights, into and out of the U.S are currently canceled on Wednesday and Thursday. 1.6 million Floridians are experiencing power cuts due to the storm. U.S. Border Patrol and Coast Guard are looking for around 23 missing migrants after their ship sank during the storm. Ian's power at landfall could confirm it as in the top five of strongest hurricanes by wind speed ever to hit the U.S., according to U.S. media.